Well, he's setting up. I wanted to make one note here. Probably another good reason that you don't see ROIs posted in the federal government. If any of you have been in the, through the CPIC cycle and the budget process, what happens if you <laughs> voluntarily note that you saved $25 million last year? The money's gone. The money's gone. The money's gone. <laughs> So you that won't rich. find a lot of government ROIs. We're working with DOI on their enterprise architecture. Colleen Coggins specifically said, we don't want you to do that. Thank you very much. We know you can do it, but we don't want you to. We don't have a number floating around that. Okay, so, so this is not my normal voice. My son and his playgroup dropped off a nice little sore throat to me. And since it only hurts when I talk, you can, assure, you can be assured that I'm going to be brief. In my role at Lockheed Martin as a senior fellow and a person who runs our cyber, SOA, and cloud computing strategy organizations is to make sure that we are able to deliver against current and future government missions. And that's really what I'm, I'm going to focus on today. A lot less about what enterprise architecture is to you because you are educated enterprise architects. Enterprise architecture and is by now over 17, 18 years old. So we're now way past this discussion about, is it valid? Is it important? Should we use it? We have laws that mandate it. What we need to talk about now is how to make sure it is mature. What are we as architects going to be responsible for to create the value and the promise that was tied to this in set of initiatives 17 years ago? By the way, today is the 40th anniversary of Earth Day, so maybe those two things have some kind of relationship. Now, um, the next slide that I'm going to show you is, in, at the same time, the reason why we need enterprise architecture, and at the same time, the major inhibitor to enterprise architecture. In, in my role, I review about 4,000 projects annually associated with service-oriented architecture, cyber, cloud computing. All of them have an enterprise architecture base. So when you look at 4,000 projects in a year, you start to understand what it is that works and what it is that doesn't. And so while there are a number, probably 15, 20 different techniques that you as architects can use to derive value from your particular programs, I'm going to be talking about one specific one today. And that one is, if you have your pins ready, that one is high enterprise architecture to the innovation on-ramp that your agency is looking to for its innovation strategy. Innovation is the engine that your agency is using to stay abreast of and keep focused on its mission. Enterprise architecture tied to innovation is a critical strategy architects can use to ensure the relevancy of enterprise architecture on an ongoing basis, year after year. The reason we have this condition is because of this slide right here. The situation is critical. We have an environment today where business and technology change is happening much faster than we as agencies can comprehend. You know, last year this time we had an investment banking industry. We also had an American automotive industry. We don't have those things today and in fact, we have agent mission, agency missions that we don't have today, that we had before, and we have many more missions now than we had before. The other element to this, the frequency and the amplitude, is that the impact of these changes is also happening faster than we can comprehend. And the reason this is significant to architects is because architects are the people that the agency leaders point to to say, help me solve this problem. But frankly, the agency leaders could care less about enterprise architecture. If a stick, a can, and a rope could solve this problem, they wouldn't care what, what you call it. And in fact, most agency leaders worry about the impact of and, and, and veracity of enterprise architecture because the element associated with this problem and solution set is focused on what? Speed. Because if you take too long, the problem is either way too big, way too big for you to actually solve it at an enterprise architect's level, or the impact is so big, so pervasive, that enterprise architecture is now not part of the solution set. 
So the challenge that we as enterprise architects have is to find a way to solve this problem with architecture. And the key, one of the keys to solving this problem or set of problems using enterprise architecture is to focus on innovation. Tying enterprise architecture to innovation does a, a whole host of things. The most important thing to remember here is that enterprise architecture is the heartbeat of this innovation discussion for an agency. But you can live for a little while without your heart, but not long. And so when we tie enterprise architecture to innovation, and we help agencies innovate using the strategies of enterprise architecture, alignment of business and IT, ensuring that we are able to increase the ability to analyze and make decisions based on the um, artifacts that we have in enterprise architecture and being able to identify when we have opportunities that agencies can take advantage of that they couldn't take advantage of before because of the cost savings and the correct investment strategies associated with enterprise architecture, then innovation becomes real to agency leaders. And enterprise architecture is just exactly what Jim Washington said from the FAA. I'm not sure I know enough to be an enterprise architect, but I'm absolutely sure I know what it does for me. So the question is, what roads are we to take so that we can impact and drive innovation using enterprise architecture and thereby achieve the business value that our agencies are looking for? I'm going to list a couple. This is not a comprehensive list. The first one is to use enterprise architecture to institutionalize new approaches. Now, let me tell you something. I teach enterprise architecture at the master's level and at the FIAC Institute. And so I'm very familiar with the rigid methodology associated with enterprise architecture. The beauty of it is not that it's not only rigid, but that it's flexible and can absorb and integrate with a whole host of other new approaches and new ways of looking at things. New ideas can be used inside the context of this rigor that brings enterprise architecture to innovate. And not only that, this idea that we have to take months and years to get the value associated with enterprise architecture is not true. Stop telling people that. We can derive value associated with enterprise architecture in weeks and months. When we talk about the on-ramp for innovation, and we'll be looking at a couple of the innovative capabilities that we're talking about, we will not be talking about them in terms of months and weeks and decades. We will be talking about them in terms of weeks and days. So institutionalization of new approaches is a key element, a key strategy for enterprise architects to tie EA to innovation. The idea that we can get access to easily accessible technology. So you know this idea of cloud computing is hot right now, and there's nobody more interested in it than the federal government. But when we talk about cloud computing, we're talking about the ability to speed more mission capability faster in a utility and a utility and a subscription based uh, way. Enterprise architecture is a fundamental foundation for this kind of innovation. So when we think, see things like the IT dashboard and data.gov, and when we see the Army Apps Challenge, that is a, a short time frame associated with the development of Army mission apps, this is not absent of enterprise architecture. This is foundationally tied to enterprise architecture. And so, when we're trying to establish a sole foundation, when we're looking to maximize our utilization of public, private, and hybrid clouds, when we're trying to extend mission capabilities, whether they be uh, searching for water on Mars, or whether they be doing the census for uh, the, uh, the uh, country, or whether we're talking about keeping records for the life of the republic, or whether we're talking about generating new, new energy via ocean and wave research. These are the capabilities and missions that are tied and innovative and foundationally capable only because we have enterprise architecture. And so, the message to enterprise architects is innovate. Use enterprise architecture to innovate. 